Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Giovanni and today I'm going to teach you how to be a pro with the modern controls in Tomb Raider. Well, in the classic games we have squares and these squares are the basic unit of measurement in the game, determining the distance Lara can travel in her jumps and movements. Understanding how these squares work is fundamental to mastering the modern controls and make impressive movements like long range jumps. Let's explore how these squares influence gameplay and how you can use them to your advantage to become a true Tomb Raider master. Well, let's start with the control settings. Camera sensibility set it to 8 to rotate faster during jumps, and that zone set it to 10 to ensure Lara rotates faster when you move the joystick. And trust me, this helps a lot with precious jumps. And step 2. Grabbing onto legs. You don't need to step back for Lara to grab on. Just hold the second action button, which is the right trigger or right mouse button, while moving her towards the edge. She will automatically grab on, and you don't need to keep the button pressed. Step 3. Types of jumps. Jump up. Wow. Just press the jump button while Lara is standing, right? Uh, and she will simply jump up. And we have the automatic jump up. Just hold the action button in case of modern controls is the right trigger or right mouse button. When in front of a wall, Laura will jump and grab automatically if she can reach. If she can't reach, she won't perform the automatic jump. And we have the fall jump. Press the jump button and the direction we wish to jump when Laura is standing still. And finally, we have the long range jump. Run at least the distance of one full square before jumping. It's the most difficult jump in the morning controls. Step 4. Perfect long range jumps. Well, to start, let's practice at Lara's home to get a hang of it. For a long range jump, let's do the following. The long range jump, where Lara runs and makes a big leap. And this leap reaches three squares, but it's necessary for Laura to walk at least one full square before making that leap. Usually you need to do two steps with a square, and when you jump while moving towards the direction, she will jump this distance of three squares. So, let's do the following. You will walk using the walk button, take a step, Release the walk button and press the jump button when Lara takes the first running step on the edge of the platform. So, let's do it again. Holding the walk button, release the walk button after the second running step. And then, press the jump button. As you can see in this fail simulation, um, many times you try to jump, we want to walk half the square, and when you press the jump button, she falls. This happens in several places, because generally, the distance is... we don't have enough distance to jump. And as you can see, the tank control is even simpler. Just step back, run, and press the jump button, and she will reach. So, in the modern controls, do this walking jump, which will be much easier it's hard at the beginning, but once you get a hang of it, everything will be alright. Step 5. Multiple long jumps. After a long jump, if Laura keeps running as soon as she lands, every two steps she makes another long jump. That is if you need to reach a vocal or a secret, like that of the Coliseum, you have to make sure she takes at least two steps before making the next jump. And it's crucial that you control the camera, because Laura will jump towards the camera. She doesn't have to spin around herself to be able to make jump. Or in this case, she doesn't do those acrobat jumps in modern controls, just in tank. So it's good to always ensure the two steps every time you land on the ground to be able to make another long jump. Step 6. Combat. Tank controls are very, very useful in combat, and that's why in modern controls, as soon as you hold the left trigger and make Lara hold the weapons, tank controls come back into play. But you're not exactly like tank. Lara can still move towards the camera, but I say the action of stepping back, doing the backflip, 
jump to the side. This allows you to dodge enemy attacks and lose at least the minimal amount of life possible. This is awesome. So, abuse the backflips and side flips to deceive the end. And also, last but not least, we must choose weapons wisely and also use movement to confuse and avoid enemies' attacks. For example, if it's an enemy with a weapon, um, you can just keep it doing backflips and shooting at them. They will hit you with all the shots and you will die. The correct thing is to run behind them because the attacks always come from in front of the enemy. So a useful thing about modern controls is always to run behind the enemy with the weapon. Um, this will prevent you from receiving the, the least amount of damage possible. Look for open spaces to fight so you can make those jumps and confuse the enemy with that air jump. And when you jump in the air, you can change the Lara's direction. They implemented this in Tomb Raider 2, I think. In some levels, you need to make this kind of jump. And in Tomb Raider 1, um, this jump was non-existent, because we didn't need it. But to use modern control, we really need to change direction while we are in the air. Especially if you are sliding down a ramp. We need to turn to be able to grab onto a ledge. And this is crucial so that you receive the least amount of damage possible. So, run around and deceive and you won't be hit by the enemy bullets. So, it's a great tip. Well, I hope you liked the video. I ask that you to subscribe to our channel and continue supporting us with likes and activating notifications so we can continue with this Tomb Raider content. Now that we have these remasters and more novelties coming, we are very excited to share as much as possible of this world of Tomb Raider. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time!